Hello, my name is Hamid. Today I'm working on this heat pump dryer. This dryer is a ventless dryer, and the customer's complaint was that the dryer doesn't heat properly. It shuts off uh, faster, and the customer has to run this dryer a couple of times uh, before they get the clothes dried out. So today I will show you how to clean this. At least just to clean up, everything seems okay, and I'll show you what needs to be done here. This dryer, the model and serial number is here. If you don't um, clean this dryer properly, it will cause these kind of issues, which is uh, not heating properly or it may shut down after a couple of minutes or you have to uh, run it multiple uh, times in order to dry everything. So this is your filter you want to clean every time. Of course, you got a lint um, filter right here, which you're cleaning it. It's in good shape. It looks clean. Look at the inside, it's completely plugged with lint. Um, if you don't clean this, uh, you're gonna have issues. I picked up this uh, drawer from a commercial place they're using only for towel. I brought this in my garage and I'm working on it and I'll show you how to clean this. In order to clean that, to get rid of all of that lint, uh, it's super hard to do it if you're working it from, from outside, from here. In order to get rid of all of that, a uh, lint build up there which is already deep inside of the uh, co coils you can use air compressor or um, leaf blower to blow all the dust out but you cannot use the leaf blower or um, air compressor inside here from from outside you really have to open the drawer apart in order to get deep into there and clean it in order to open the unit uh, we need a needle nose plier uh, we need a, just a small flat screwdriver. Uh, we need a Phillips uh, drill bit, uh, number two. And we also need a, a quarter inch and 516 drill bit. So I have this combination of two. It's uh, 516 uh, quarter inch and 516. So if I add it this way, it's gonna be f uh, quarter inch if I add it this way on the on the extension, it's going to be 516. So I will need the 516 here for now. And then later on, we can change it. This one and that one. 516. Let comes out. We have to disconnect the door switch. We also have to disconnect the display board. It has a little small clip. You want to press on that clip and then at the same time you pull the, the wire out. Because I'm making video, it's a little bit tricky to do it with two hands, but yeah, you press on it and then pull it out. And then the same thing, here's our uh, door switch connector. The reason we have a flat screwdriver, you can use a flat screwdriver to press it in here and then pull it out it's disconnected we are good you see that little small um, plastic clip press it in and push it this is for the display cable here it's out in order to take this display board out there's one screw here another screw is right here we are going to take both of these screws out take one two three three screws uh, out from the top and then four screws from the bottom i will take this one out the last because i still have to take this screw and this screw out these are phillips We are going to take this top panel off. One in here. On the top. We will take this, uh, this screw and this screw out. And then we also got two screws on both sides here. And also disconnect this for the moisture sensor wire. When you press on these tabs, at the same time, try to with the flat screwdriver you're good here 
we got a screw here and then now you can lift it up lift it from this side open the belt um, of course I have to um, I had to tell you to disconnect the power before you work on it but because it's at the middle of the garage it's already disconnected I'm safe here and you can insert your hand inside look at the thickness of the the length is too thick and look here this is also plugged and the only way you can clean this is to blow it with air compressor i'm gonna vacuum it a little bit but i really have to uh, use an air compressor to blow all of that out so here you can see how it gets built up here not easy to clean with vacuum from from the back so that's why you have to open the dryer apart The coils are clean here. It's good, but still I'm gonna have to clean some more. And now here's the main part. Now this part needs to be cleaned. So I took the four screws out and now I'm gonna have to disconnect this one. If you disconnect anything, please take pictures or just write on a note. So these are the stuff you wanna uh, add back in when you put this cover back in. So far I got 16 screws out and the next part I'm gonna do is I have to take this blower out the screws holding uh, this assembly you can see this right here you have to hold it tight um, you can use a small crescent wrench to hold it because it has an opening I'll show you now you see that opening right there to turn it clockwise you will remove it and in order to reinstall it back or retight it you have to turn it counterclockwise so i will be turning it clockwise to remove it And I'll actually show you I'm sorry I made a mistake you have to use your plier right here not in there right here you do not want to use it you want to use it in here and I'll show you again it's a very tight spot see when I turn this I'm holding it tight and I'm turning it the blower has came off you need to take one off this one and see how it goes yeah so here I can lift it up now Let's see here it's completely off and look at this how thick is this lint build up here See that? It's really thick. 
this is your evaporator um, you also want to clean this but this is the softest part uh, this one is your condenser coils and you want to clean both of them this is more important but uh, since uh, the unit is open apart i would also uh, clean my evaporator coils to see how it looks you want to clean it really good And here's the fun part that when you open this uh, area apart it can take up to two hours one to two hours to clean all of this because um, if if you use air compressor even from the back of these coils it will blow some of the stuff from the front but it will not completely clean it so you really have to get um, a small flat screwdriver and start cleaning it like this you want to be very careful do not pinch anything just keep cleaning it like this and if you want to use a vacuum at the same time you can it's helpful otherwise you have to keep doing this and it's, it's not going to take more than one or two hours if you want to do a really good job it looks that the computer uh, the it looks that the uh, customer was also trying to clean this that's why they kind of bent at all of these fences uh, which is very bad uh, if you pinch these like if you bring it this way by adding extra pressure on it these fences should look like that it should not, not look it should not look like this you see these they shouldn't be looking like this If it looks like this it's not good you want to fix it um, if you go on a refrigeration uh, supplies place where you buy your refrigeration and stuff they also have a comb it's like a hair comb that you can use it to straighten these out and clean it at the same time I'm gonna uh, stop the camera right now because it's a big job I have to spend so much time here and use the vacuum at the same time to get rid of all of these and I still have to fix these fences so I have to straight them and then I will turn on the camera again and see where I am thank you so much for watching for now and here look what I found so far I've been uh, using air compressor and vacuum and this flat screwdriver to clean it what I found was while I was playing around you see this part it actually comes out this makes the job go way easier so you want to know uh, or maybe take pictures or mark it down with a marker the way it sits just mark it down like this so you won't make a make a mistake by adding it opposite way okay so so far i've spent 45 minutes only to clean these coils uh, by using air compressor uh, i had to vacuum it at the same time and i was also using my flat screwdriver it seems really good it's it's i would say it's 90 percent better than before uh, the last thing you want to do is spray it with some soapy water warm water only on the top part area here and then it's going to flow down let it sit for about three four minutes and then after that you have to use your air compressor and blow everything out um, i used my air compressor for the last time i could not get anything out so i decided to spray it with soapy water and then now i'm gonna spray it and it's gonna shoot all the debris out in this here uh, it's gonna shoot out all the debris out in this area and you will see it looks really good compared to you uh, before uh, you will never get it 100% all the debris out because 
we got some debris out uh, stuck in that side and then on that side which is almost impossible to do uh, clean unless you cut this um, this high side uh, copper line if you cut it from there and then uh, it's a refrigeration seal system you don't want to go that deep if you're a technician and it's in your own place and you also know how to do refrigeration then i would advise you to cut the pipe vacuum uh, reclaim all the uh, freon from it vacuum it uh, resolder it back and pull it out rinse it with water clean it really good uh, resolder it back and vacuum it and then charge it uh, but uh, I don't I don't think you have to go that deep it's way better than before and the dryer is gonna work perfectly fine the last tip I can give you on this um, dryer is when you do all of your cleanup you see everything looks really good but I miss one part you see that thermistor right there I'll show you from inside how it looks you see that all of this needs to be clean You can clean it um, you can clean it the way I did or you can also uh, clean it in a way that I forgot to tell you I was supposed to tell you that at first but it's okay you can just take these two screws off here we go look wow imagine if you get this much debris um, and dust lint build up here around the thermistor what's gonna happen it will also cause an error code your drawer will not run properly. It will uh, give send bad reading to the control board and then you will have problems. Stick your finger here, clean it, good. And for this, you can always use a little small teeth brush or just, it's not perfect, but it's good. Sorry guys, I'm making video and with other hand I'm using uh, to make the video it's better you don't have to go deep into this it's fine see the benefit of having magnetic drill bit it really helps and also please uh, subscribe to my channel if you guys want to learn more um, so you guys are subscribing to my channel it also helps me and at the same time I will be making more nice videos for you guys uh, it seems okay um, I don't think I really have to go more deep into this um, I got a chance for a couple of uh, minutes to uh, straighten all of these fences I do not have my uh, comb that you can use and I'll also post a picture of that in, so you can see how it looks if you're a homeowner uh, please be careful to not uh, stick anything here or damage these fences or uh, push them in like this see you don't want it to to be like that if it's pinched like this then it's not gonna work the way it's supposed to so you want to be careful with that do not use any hard or strong brush on it just uh, vacuum it and uh, if you're a handy person of course open it apart and clean it the way i did other than that you're good to go so now i'm gonna put everything back together yeah i do not want to forget about this and i'm sure there will be some uh, lint build up here too it's important to clean this too because your unit is open apart you might as well try your best to clean that as as much as possible this way you don't have to run into this issue again if you're doing a lot of uh, laundry, I would recommend um, cleaning your drawer the way I did. Maybe max every three to four years. You don't have to do this every one year. It's not like um, a regular drawer that you have to clean. Uh, the good part of these drawers are, um, if you get lots of uh, debris or lint build up in here, it will never burn and cause uh, black stains on your cloth. Uh, which uh, which it does on the regular dryer with the heating element if you got lots of uh, lint build up in that area on this mishy screen that will burn and uh, stain your clothes with black color discoloration 
on this one it's okay you're not uh, facing those kind of issues double check your insulations these gaskets the way they're sitting show you from the top here how it's supposed to look when you put this uh, cover back in you see that um, that spot here this is supposed to line up and you can see all your holes are lining up here this one you do not want to forget uh, and install it properly the way it is before you add any of your screws you're gonna add this screw if you remember it was a longer screw and now I can add all of these screws there's one screw here two there one there this one that one that one these ones this one this and that I added all the uh, screws back in the stainless small insulation do not forget to add this when I added my, my screws I kind of forgot to add this bracket the uh, small clip here that holds this thermistor in place I had to pull this uh, screw out and then uh, re-add this again so it's good um, before you put everything back together check your motor just suspend it to make sure it's good um, I really love the way um, I use the air compressor look at the motor it looks brand new now which is good um, double check your idler pulley because you don't want to get a recall back for some reason if the pulley is not good um, you, might ask, you might ask to replace it that's a, a 20-25 dollar part or cheaper also double check your uh, low, uh, uh, your roller wheels both of them sometimes you get a little bit of hair maybe clean all of that here do not any, uh, add any kind of lubrication if you don't have to, if you don't need it, because it also collects dust and causes uh, more issues. And the same thing on this one. Uh, double check your uh, your coils here, closer to the back. If it needs to be cleaned more, you can do that. Run back in. I have to add this part, this blower. If I put the drum, then I'll not be able to put the blower wheel back in see I can I can hold it and now it even tells you on the wheel to remove which way to turn to uh, retight which way to turn so counterclockwise as we are installing it back in See, eventually it's gonna stop and then put just a little bit pressure on it that's all you don't have to do anything more uh, before you put your drum back and double check your belt to make sure there's no cracks in it if you got any cracks on it uh, you need to replace your belt. The belt looks in good shape. The drawer is not that old, so I don't think I need to replace it. Um, I will be working on the hard part. Uh, the reason I said hard part because um, on electrical drawers, you got the heating element located right there. You got only that much uh, space held by the heat element. But on this one, because you got the condenser coils, evaporator coils, the the rest of the hoses and everything. You do not have enough space to stick one of your hand from this side, another one from uh, that side. So you got two options here. You can stick your hand. If you got a tiny hand, you can stick your hand from this area, but you have to uh, lift the drum up a little bit. Or you have to replace the uh, belt on top of the pulley with uh, using one hand. I have experience um, in installing the belts with one hand, but this is my first time I'm, I will be trying on this and see if I can do it with one hand, good. If not, then I'm gonna have to use two hands. 
So you have to fill your um, pulley first. The pulley, um, just hold it with your fingers and spin back and forth so you know that you got the pulley. Uh, and then you can also play around with your uh, oiler pulley. One is the motor pulley, which I'm spinning right now, and then the other one is the uh, oiler pulley that you can use one of your hands to hold it and feel it like this. I wish I had ability to make a video inside how am I how I'm gonna do it but uh, you, if you're a technician you can do this no problem because you have experience and you know the rotation of the belt but if you're not a technician then it's gonna be give you a little bit hard time and again worst case you can always stick two hands one hand from here I'm touching the idler pulley right now which is easy and then you use the other hand from here from the left hand side it's possible that you can stick your hand right here you got a little bit of a space you use a flashlight to see if i can show you how it looks from here just like that Here you can see the belt is on top of the pulley and the motor uh, pulley shaft. I hope you can see it and it's easier for you to do it. Otherwise, um, it's a little bit hard for me to explain it how to do it right now. And also what you can do is uh, keep spinning your roller wheel, I mean uh, blower wheel. Let me show you something here which is very important. You may want to mark one place. You don't have to mark it. You can even just add a piece of debris, a piece of um, lint, just like that. And then you also have to hold it from the top and then keep spinning this until you see this debris coming back on, on the same spot without the belt slipping off from the pulley. And the reason I'm saying this because um, if you didn't install the belt properly uh, it's gonna snap out and then it will come off when you put everything back together the belt will slip off and then you have to do everything back from the start and the reason I'm uh, kind of helping the drum with my finger here is I do not want the the drum to come closer to me and then the belt would come off again this uh, lint that I added here it came back on its original position now I, I'm confident that the belt was on a store properly and I'm gonna put the rest of the stuff back in and the same thing you want to get rid of the, the hair from here four longer screws that goes on four corners and also the way this looks it doesn't look good so what I'm gonna do is I have to disconnect it push it back in and then pull it out from here from the top Uh, do not over tight these screws because you can strip it easily these screws are only going in the plastic so once you feel it's tight do not uh, screw it anymore
I'll show you something else here. It's a little bit important. I don't know if you care or not. You see this one, that one, they go here, but you have to know how it goes. You see this channel opening? Right here, this opening. This plastic piece gets inserted right here. Not out, not in, not out, but at the center. And hopefully I can show you here. See that? I made a sm another small mistake here. See the bottom of the panel went inside. It shouldn't be like that. So let me see if I can pull it out. If not, then I'm gonna have to take the three screws back again from the top and then I have to do it in a different way. Yeah, so it looks like I can do it. I took the left hand side and the center screw off. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it's out now. If you look at the bottom of the display, these uh, plastic clips, they get inserted on these four holes. There's four holes in here. Also make sure these, for some reason, if your wires are getting closer to the drum, you don't want that. So you have to maybe use a zip tie or something to tie it in place, but it's good. It's good too. And here I'll show you my drill bit again. A quarter inch. If I pull it out and I spin it, now it became 516. 516, quarter inch. The reason I I added the quarter inch back again from 516 is, see, so many mistakes I make. <laughs> so what I did was, um, I forgot to, I forgot to add two screws that hold this uh, top panel display in place. For some reason, these are the, the self-tapping screws that they added here. I don't know why. I've never seen self-tapping screws on an original, on a brand, on an original unit. Okay, I have to put my filter back in. I forgot to wear a mask, but I I advise you guys to wear a mask when you're doing your uh, dryer cleanup. Um, thank you so much for watching my, my videos. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and share it with others. I really appreciate everyone's support and beautiful positive comments and support that they are giving me through Facebook and YouTube. I will be posting more uh, videos. Thank you.